Welcome to the stream, Lord Henry. Appreciate you being here. Hey, Eric. No worries. No worries. Like I say, family is always more important. But thanks for checking in. I don't think there's going to be any try about it, but anyway, we are definitely going to do it. fighter one way or another and all I have to do is click a button to make sure that I can recruit her later then I'm certainly going to oh yeah necromancers are tricky that school of magic is a lot more devastating than people give it um, give it the benefit of, I think. Especially when you have a a human PM in charge of controlling it. I mean, Bone Chill is highly underrated as a spell in this game but utilizing it under human control can be devastating to a party let alone all the summons that can come along with it have to keep their distance from each other because something like blight is horrible <laughs> it's absolutely horrible I always hate used to hate when my DM would pull out his AOE templates and you see him reaching for a for a template and you go okay that's not so bad and then you see him going oh no that's the wrong one and reaching for the next one and you go oh that thing's huge <laughs> Uh, looking at the map to see how many of you are covered by it. Hey Smurf, welcome from across the pond. Can't wait to get myself back over there later on this year. Been since before COVID, since I've seen a really good friend of mine over there, so I'm anxious to go back and, and visit her and her family.
Dusty Hark. I know that's what... Like I say, when you have a human controlling them, they, uh, they're, they're just devastating. They're just devastating. A lot of times, you know, games just aren't coded in a way to best... Well, they can never be coded in a way to, to best utilize certain things or the creative ways to use things. That's why I was so impressed in, you know, a couple of playthroughs where the casters threw Hunger of Hadar in very creative locations to get it to land. Even though I don't think it was entirely correct because I think it's in the game here that those are all coded as conical AoEs. So they extend from ground level all the way up to infinity in the game, no matter where the thing actually lands vertically. I don't think there's a sphere, which I get why you do it from a coding perspective, but yeah, it's kind of kind of cheesy when they cast it five feet above all of your casters' heads and or all of your party's heads, and it still lands on everybody. Hey, Astor, welcome. That's just getting started for me. But, yeah, I got a, got a good weekend plan. Going to be spending it with a friend of mine. So, once we're done here, um, they'll be coming over here and we'll have a bit of time together until the next stream uh, starting up on Sunday. Hey, Rudy, welcome. Thanks for being here. And I, I appreciate that, Smurf. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like I say, you don't you don't have to, to kill yourself to catch the videos. I certainly appreciate it. I, yeah, the the VODs will be available and you can watch them whenever you want. Because yeah, that's that's uh that's a late time. It wasn't a late time when I was younger, but for me now being old. <laughs> that's uh that's a late time. But it is... I mean, it was a 12 a.m. start for you? That's... That would be GMT minus 6, isn't it? Is it... GMT minus 5 right now, I think. Well, depending on where, I guess... Uh, for the... For, uh, for the UK, minus 5. But, yeah, it could have been an hour worse. <laughs> you passed all the checks in your honored playthrough on the Zathix. Wow. That's, again, some incredible luck. I've only seen luck like that one time here in the game when when Will cast Elders Blast and got three Nat 20s. <laughs> but I've never been able to roll that well <laughs> myself. Yeah, that's what I expected. Ostomaro, it's yeah, okay, yeah, it's four PM now in the UK. I wonder. Yeah, you're right, it is. So it is still minus six. I thought it was minus five right now. Since we're in daylight time. Oh, yeah, because you guys have changed as well. That's why. <laughs> it is still GMT minus 5. It's 3 o'clock GMT, but you guys have now changed to Daylight Savings Time as well. That's why.
Yeah, that's a tough set of rolls, Lord Henry. It's a tough set of rolls. Yeah, Smurf, I just forgot about that. I forgot you guys change a little bit later than we do, but you guys still change. GMT always stays the same, but you guys change around it. Yeah, that's why everybody's getting to the same spot. I wish one of these days they would just get rid of daylight savings time entirely and just leave it normal time, standard time. For some reason here in the U.S., everybody wants to change it so that daylight savings time is the normal time, and that just messes with my circadian rhythms. But we'll see. Welcome everyone to today's live stream, episode 3 of our Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode gameplay series. I'm Commander Droval, and I want to thank for coming along on our journey today. So I don't think we have any admin notes, and that is going to become more prevalent here going forward. Larian has, has said that they're obviously winding things down on on fixes and changes to the game. So I expect that we're going to be getting fewer and fewer hot fixes as we go. Um, I don't expect that we're going to get another full-size patch. I think we're done with patches. I think we are now just in maintenance mode and I expect that that's going to be tailoring off a little bit here, tailing off a little bit here as we go, so I expect that we're not going to have many admin notes going forward except some channel notes, and for this week we don't have any notes about the channel, so I think we'll go into our recap here, and at the end of last week's episode, we had made our way into the grove, we have had a few conversations, passed a few persuasion checks, done a few of the things inside the hollow and we're going to pick up and continue doing that and we're going to take care of a few other things including a couple of combat encounters but first we're going to jump in to one of the most important NPCs or actually the most important NPC for this playthrough and it's going to be somebody unexpected, but you'll quickly find out why. Okay, so Damon here 
we know how important Damon is. Damon has a great selection of items um, here early in Act 1 for you to increase both your offense and your defense. And then when you get him into um, Act 2, that just gets better. And then in Act 3, it's still really good as well, um, let alone his importance to um, to Karlak's storyline. So Damon is is a very, very important NPC for how we're going to be playing. But the most important NPC in the game for us is actually right here. Seems like a good moment to talk. Ah, uh, it isn't the talk of the camp. Thank goodness you came along when you... Oh! You're twitching something fierce, love. And your eyes... You look like you don't know the meaning of the word sleep. Auntie Ethel will sort you out. I've lotions and potions galore. Hey, bother. We are not interested in Auntie Ethel as um, her quest line at this point and we all know at this point who and what auntie ethel is auntie ethel has two things here that are very very important for us and one of them determines how we are going to be playing the rest of this playthrough so first is corlon's grace this staff is one of those throwaway staves um, <laughs> when you're going through this on your normal playthrough. This, this staff is a big jump in combat and defense for a specific build. And it's a build that we are going to be exploring here um, as we progress, as we get to level four. Um, Coralon's Grace gives you a plus one bonus to unarmed attack rolls and damage. So it's a straight plus one bonus to hit and to damage with your unarmed attack rolls. Now for a monk, you go, well, wait a minute. Coralon's Grace is a quarter staff. So you're equipping this quarter staff to get that bonus to unarmed attacks, but now you're not attacking unarmed, you're attacking with your staff. And that is true. However, monks do the vast majority of their damage with their bonus actions, not with their main hand attacks. And since you do equip this, your main hand attack is now an attack with a quarter staff, so you're going to be dealing either 1d8 or 1d6 bludgeoning damage, and you won't get the plus one bonus to unarmed attack rolls and damage. You will, however, receive a plus two bonus to saving throws if you're not wearing any armor, but your bonus attacks where you were able to do things like flurry of blows and that sort of stuff will benefit from a plus one bonus to those unarmed attacks. And with Flurry of Blows attacking twice in a turn, you're basically getting two different attacks that all get an additional plus one damage, and they both have a plus one to hit. So Corlon's Grace is definitely an important staff to pick up for a build that we're going to be looking at, but that is not what we're really interested in. We could go without this. The most important thing here are these. Um, the elixirs of hill giant strength increase your strength to 21. Um, this elixir can be thrown to apply its effects. It lasts until long rest and it is not concentration based. So once every day after you wake up from a long rest you can take one of these and drink it and that character is 
has their strength increased to 21 for that entire long rest. Now, when you count up how many long rests you have throughout a playthrough, it normally comes out to be somewhere in the 20 to 24 range. Okay. So, having 25 of these in storage somewhere means that you will never have your strength down below 21 for a single character at any time throughout the game. And that means that you can customize the build of that character to have strength as a dump stat. The thing with certain characters is that they need strength to be able to hit and or cause damage, but also need some sort of spellcasting um, skill or um, ability score. And then you normally want to have some good amount of dexterity to either get, help give them armor class and or help get them higher in the initiative rolls. That's three ability score stats to try and focus on, and that means that you can get two of them to 16 and one of them to 14 if you dump all three of the other stats. Or doing this allows you to dump strength entirely, put those other points into maxing out those other two ability scores and evening out the other two, or the other three, and still have your strength be a massive bonus at 21. Later on in the game, this can be augmented with Elixirs of Cloud Giant Strength, which increase your strength to 27. And, but those are fairly rare. You're only going to end up with three of those, I think, um, in your playthrough. But that's still ones that you can obviously save for big boss encounters and that sort of stuff. You can also craft Elixirs of Hill Giant Strength. We already have one that we found. You can craft these as well. So what I normally try and do is get myself up to 21 of these. And that means I need to buy these out seven times. And at 207 a piece for a group of three, 207 gold a piece for a group of three, that's 1,400 gold that I need to spend on Elixirs of Hill Giant Strength. You buy them out, you go back to your camp, you take a partial rest, which means you go to camp to take a long rest, you don't use any camp supplies, come back here and buy these again. Now, the rule of thumb for traders is that if you plan on spending more than two times what the amount of gold is going to take you to increase a vendor's attitude from zero to 100, then it's cheaper in the long run to donate the gold to raise their attitude to 100 before you start buying the items. Now, the amount of gold it takes to raise a vendor's attitude from 0 to 100 is purely based on your level. So right now, at a level 3 bard, it's going to take me donating 600 gold to Auntie Ethel to raise her from 0 to 100. The extra discount that that is going to get me at 600 gold, since I'm buying 1,400 gold worth of potions here, plus 230 for Coralon's Grace, so 1,600 and change in gold, that's still going to work out in my favor. Donating 600 gold times 2 is 1,200. I'm buying more than 1,200 gold worth of items from her, so it's going to work out. However, gold is in short supply early on in the game. You don't have a lot of it, and it's fairly hard to come by. So we need to find another way to do this, okay? 
And we're going to do that, but... Take care now, sweetie. To do that, what that means is that we're going to have to do a respec. And at this point, I don't want to respec because I don't want to have a character stuck with me at a low level when I've got a couple of other things to do here inside the camp first. So we're going to go do a couple of combat encounters here. Then we're going to come back. By that time, our, our action economy will probably be a bit lower. And we won't have any encounters that are time-based. And we can come back here and, and deal with this mechanic. So first, we're going to head back towards the beginning. Because there are a couple of encounters that we want to deal with, and the first one's out here. These tieflings prove fragile. I have a mind to end their misery myself. Calm yourself. They're survivors, not soldiers. I fail to see the distinction. Get Long Strider up on everybody. Then we're gonna go have a conversation with Timber here. I need a quick word. lunges at your foot and bites it. Okay, now as the Dark Urge, you have an option to do a couple of things here. Um, I am going to play my Dark Urge differently um, and not going to go down the bloodthirsty route. Um unless I am required to as my dark urge. You barged in without an invitation. I wouldn't call that friendly. See, you're in my territory and I want you gone. So I have a persuasion check that I can make here. Wow. Okay, I hope things get better from there, chat. How about this? You can stay if you keep those ugly feet on the ground. I'll even sweeten the pot. Found some weird smelling stuff on the ground. You can keep it, but these trees are mine. Follow the rules and I won't have to intervene. Got it? Okay, and they're gonna get, get you a crafting component. Okay, we're going to make our way around here. Once we get here, we're going to put everybody in hiding. We're going to take a star in. We're going to break our group. Silence. More goblins. What's next? And we're going to send a star in all the way up here, and we're going to wait for turn base mode here. I was a little late on that. Okay. That was a huge hit. <laughs> so what you want to make sure you're doing is you're attacking from hiding here. And with a Starian sneak attack, um, that doesn't break hiding until it lands. So if you do that with him, you're guaranteed to get a surprise round here. 
which is definitely what you want. And I didn't expect the crit, but I will certainly take it. Don't waste a step. Wow. Perfect. Wow. I'll take all those rolls. So now we'll talk to Nadira. Very well. You have good timing. Never been much of a fighter, so wrestling a bugbear would have gone poorly. But you're not here for heroics, are you? Avernus's stench is all over your skin. Let me guess. Your devil mistress sent you to get her soul coin back. Too bad. I earned it, fair and square. Okay, so we have a deception check that we can make here, and we're going to have this with advantage. Oh boy, the nat one. These rolls here. Up and down, nothing ever in the middle. This is starting to scare me. That bloody Irenes. Devils just can't stand to lose. Here. Now go back to the pit that made you. Okay, so we did pick up a soul coin there. Soul coins are incredibly valuable. Not just from a usage standpoint, but also from the fact that they're worth a lot of gold. So, if you, if you have an abundance of them, then you can sell some off if you're in a pinch to gain some extra gold as well. So don't forget about that option. Okay, now we're going to make our way back down here. Just kind of open up some of the map as we go. Okay. And I did forget about that. How delicious. My Eager for battle. Okay. So we did find it the legit way. Even if we didn't, I would have still dug it up. That's honestly one of the things I wish they would have done in honor mode. Is disable the visibility of these checks. Um, you can do that in custom mode. You can turn off these passive checks so you don't ever know that they happened. Um, and that's Pay obviously path, more process. like, Build well, a little more bones. like, because if you're doing passive checks in tabletop, your DM is still rolling a die while you're just doing stuff. And that is kind of a hint that something's happening, but you don't know anything about it um, or exactly what it was for. So, um, so I would have preferred they'd have done that here, but in honor mode, but... They left them in, so it's a little easy, and we're going to take advantage of those. If we forget one and we and we miss all the checks, we're still going to dig it up. So I'm just opening up the map here. And you can see here that we have... Here lies Cannon. He gave his life defending others. He will be missed. So as time goes on here in the Grove, certain things happen. And some events are triggered um, after the fact. So Elegus. Glad you made it inside. Doubt we'll be safe here for long, though. There will be more coming. Goblins hunting packs. Maybe, but we're not fighters. If they broke through, it'd be a massacre. The sooner we leave for Baldur's Gate, the better. If the road was clear, a ten days walk, maybe? But while the goblins are out there, it might as well be the other side of the world. So, Elegus and 
Rika were previously talking or you know huddled over Kanan's body here. Glad you were here for those goblins. Picked one off yesterday myself. Shot her through the throat. Well, that should have killed her, but she kept gasping, clawing at the arrow. I had the same thought. And it's just going to keep happening. But now you can talk to them and have an interaction with them. And Kanan's body is now here um, in this grave. You'll be able to come back after they're all gone um, and have some more interactions in this area that we'll do later. So now I've got one more thing that I want to do before we start dealing with Auntie Ethel. Okay, and we're watching Melly here. Don't make me hurt you, boy. Too late! Looking at you is painful enough. They're both going to move up here up top. And this is, again, timed. I'm only going to ask you one more time, boy. Hand over my locket. I don't have your ugly locket. I've never seen it before. Hand it over or I'll slap the teeth out of your head. Okay, so if you pick here, you're going to have either a persuasion check or a... Uh, intimidation check if you convince if you let this play out um, then there's going to be a slight altercation however we can do another way here I said I don't have it maybe he dropped it running away from those big scary goblins you little spit tongue freak Okay, so our persuasion check here is going to be a five. If you pick the first option, your persuasion and your intimidation checks are both ten. If you pick this way, your persuasion check is five and your intimidation check, I believe, is fifteen. Oh, wow. I didn't even say anything, chat. I did not say anything. <laughs> okay, this is, I'm trying, I'm trying not to get angry. I'm trying not to get angry. Inspirations in honor mode are extraordinarily valuable. And... Wasting them on something where the only way I could fail it was a nat one, and then rolling two nat ones in a row. Oh, 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 oh. oh. y'all are starting to see it, chat. You're starting to see the stress. What kind of question is that? Why does anyone steal anything? Fine. I have the stupid amulet. Take it. To impress a girl, most like. It looked like my mother's, all right? Just take the damn thing and leave me alone! Keep it, kid. You need it more than me. Poor kid. You never get the smell out of my clothes. 
in my mind, that's the best outcome to it. Melly gets to keep the locket, and Barth gave it to him. Um, it wasn't the best outcome because of the loss of two inspirations. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. That was a thing. Okay, so we're gonna go over here... and do the last set of things we want to do before we start resting. You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way. She didn't kill your brother, Arka. You're better than this. Your mind wonders. If the crossbow bolt shot through her mouth, would she taste the metal before she died? Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tieflin. If you ever had it to begin with. The dark urge writing throughout this game is fairly impressive. Um, it's always extraordinarily gruesome, um, but it is really good. Looks like the Absolute sent me a protector. You gonna kill her too? <laughs> you, move! So, here we go again. Starting to dread every roll I make. I wish you weren't. I really do. Damn you. Damn it! Why do you care if a goblin lives or dies? Tch. Your soft heart will be the death of us. Can't say I understand that. I'm not sure I want to. It's all right, Arka. Let's go. And hey, Nicholas, a hey, uh, Pinhead Larry, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. So, Gail wants to talk. Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break, hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something, well, rather important. We are going to talk about this, but we're going to do this in camp and not really here. What? No rest for the dashing? Pish posh. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffused the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you stood in front of a crossbow to prevent a murder. In short, I've grown to trust you. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. You see, I have this condition, very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. The specifics are rather personal, but suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with, though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. I can say no more on the matter. Not now, anyway. Just trust me when I say it's all of vital importance. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, and before we were abducted. It's only a matter of time before my craving returns. That is why I turn to you. I need you to help me find magic items to consume. It is vital, dare I say it, critical. We 
have already done the finding. In fact, you have one in your possession. You know for yourself how hard won such an item was, and it will be no easier when even more are required to assuage my hunger. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. I'm sure we won't have to look very far to find what I need. Faerun overflows with magic-infused treasure. As do our packs, as a matter of fact. We have such an item already in our possession. Primed for the moment the need arises. I hope I can count on you. And we're going to wait until we absolutely have to do that. Um, before we actually do it. We're going to hold on to all of those things. So, a couple of things that we are going to do here... First, we are going to. What a day! My Let's get going. That might be worth a look. Okay, we're gonna ungroup and we're gonna drop down here. <laughs> And slowly make our way over here. I don't like the look of that mushroom. I should stay clear. Even your cages are boring. And we're gonna clear out this bottom area. And this is for something that we're going to need to do later. See if I can pass the Swift last one here. Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to. I think it's up there. And you're wondering why do we need to come down here? We will see that again a little bit later on. Okay. We don't have to go through the stone door here. But once we're all grouped up... We're going to head back outside and make our way around... to the entrance that we found over here. And we've already found the stone door here. We're gonna go into hiding and pop through this stone door. And I believe... Well, actually, I'm not going to take the chance. With every breath, a purpose. I'm going to have Lazel cast Mage Hand. I'm going to turn off that rune. Do you think the fight up front went... Now, the timer's back. ticking. Shut it! Boss would rip you for talking that way. Just turn off that one. He's boring. Going to fly up here. And turn that one off. And now when the mage hand timer runs out, I don't care. Could wake him up by chopping off a turn. That'd be funny. Yeah. 
Give him something to cry about. Don't wear his voice out. We still need answers. Okay. And there the timer ran out. Nice. So now I've disabled all of the statues down in here. I don't want them interfering with what I'm going to do here. Nice and easy. Glowing eyes are so really a good sign. Best tread carefully. She'll kill us dead if we go back without it. We'll get a druid talk. So, Tracker Worm here. To be full of magic. Sharp Eye, Tracker, and That's Warrior. Okay, the so there's a decent hit point Might pool here to be able to work with. We want to try and whittle that down a little bit. I'll start with a sneak attack on Tracker Worm here. Maybe we can set him on fire. Perfect. Time for discretion. Just like old times. If I can one-shot them, I'm not going to break stealth when I do it if I'm outside of a detection cone. Okay, now here I want to try and get them turned a little bit. So I want them facing me. And he turned back to face up to the top, but I did get a surprise round, which is good. So, 15. Let's whittle that down a little bit more. Ooh, I'll take that. Nice. And where are we, 11 and 19? I can't make it out there. Keep them guessing. Yep. Okay, and now their surprise goes away, and I want to get a little bit of damage here at least. Oh, thank you. Come on. Okay. That is perfectly good enough. For Gale. And now the detection cones are arranged such that I can step walk step. out here to the edge and get line of sight on everybody. And it was just enough with the 24 hit point limit to put them both to sleep. So now their detection cones disappear entirely. Go for the throat. Still I'm going to bring Lazel down here. Yeah, holding, shift, there's no detection cones, but that doesn't mean I won't get brought out of stealth here. Sometimes things can get a little weird. Hey, now that they're sleeping, I'm guaranteed a crit. I should be able to finish things off here without a problem. What 
do we have here? Okay, now Findall cannot be helped. Has to be healed. Hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you. I thought I was gonna die down here. It's my fault. I thought I'd given them the slip, but they followed me through the tunnel back there. I must tell the others what happened. I step careful. There are traps in these tunnels. And thank you again. Okay, so. The reason that we're doing this is because if these goblins are still here, when Saza comes through, there's going to be a fight, and we don't get to have it on our terms. So I want to make sure that these goblins are taken care of before Saza comes through here. So we kind of cleared a path. Assume nothing. Proceeding. Now we're gonna jump over here. Hmm. That might be worth a look. And loot a couple of things. First here the chest. Glorious vaulting, man. The fire resistance elixir is really good. And the charred key. Another antidote. That's always nice. Nothing hurts anymore. They should all be running. Okay, so we'll make our way back up here to the top. We're going to do a few things. First, we're going to be very careful with our clicking, and we're going to pick up this oil barrel here. We're going to immediately send it to camp. Careful. I mind. There. Oh dear. Hey, okay, now we'll so disarm this trap. For us. Now when you click on it, it's going to use the charred key. You do not have to lockpick this. And that gets us Nature's Snare. Nature's Snare is actually pretty good for something that we're going to be doing later on. Um, it's a way to help you do something faster, and that's because of its ensnare ability. Um, if you ensnare a target, it takes an additional 1d6 piercing damage per turn. But more importantly, attack rolls against that creature have advantage. While the creature's dexterity saving throws have disadvantage. And like I say, this is going to become more important for us later on. So we are not going to sell that. And we're going to pick up both of these oil barrels here send them to our camp. Okay, we can do some looting out of these chests down here, and that gets us back our healing potion that we used on What's Fendal. That's why I normally don't care so much about you or using a healing potion on him. And again, we're looting everything that we can that has any semblance of worth to weight ratio so yes that includes bones 
and all of that sort of stuff as well. Mine's never quiet. And now we're finished down here. With haste. So now we can make our way back out. But not the way we came in. We're going to go out through the stone door here. And that puts us back close to the prison. We can jump across here. And I've never had this happen, but I am going to close the door. Just in case. And I'm going to click on Saza here. Ain't sure why you're protecting me. <laughs> Don't care, neither. It's too late to make friends warg me. My tribe's coming. They're gonna burn this pretty place for the glory of the absolute and hang you by your guts. They'll peel your face off and nail it to a wall. I ain't scared of some god. Stick a dozen arrows in me, and Priestess Guard still patch me up. Got a whole lab set up, cooks up potions that fix our lads, no matter how much of a beating they take. Could probably stick your head back on if someone was to chop it off. <laughs> Mighty Booyog. I'm not saying we should trust a goblin, but she sounds very useful. Get me out of here, and I'll tell you where to find her. Deal? Then hurry up and do it. My tribe ain't as friendly as I am. Okay, so we're gonna make a deal here, and we're gonna release... Saza. Now, whoever you talk to her with, she's going to be attached to. to. Tribe? Just say the word. Happily, lead the way. Should mind my step. And now that the area is clear, We can just jump everybody over and go right through the underground passage. Like I say, if these goblins are here, then Warrior Gresh recognizes Saza, and a fight is going to ensue. But that fight is, again, not on your terms. You can't get a surprise round out of it or anything like that. So it's better to do that fight on your terms. To be free again, gotta say. I'll introduce you to my whole tribe and put in a good word for you. See you at the camp. Okay, and now Saza's gonna take off. We're going to see Saza again later. Um, but for now, we can kind of forget about her. There's nothing else that we need from her. We're actually going to try and get an achievement out of this that I haven't gotten in any of my personal playthroughs. Um, we're going to try and get an achievement out of it with her in an honor mode playthrough, no less. So we'll be exploring that a little bit later. Okay, 
should Vlacketh will it. Okay, and now we don't have any more time sensitive um, things to deal with, meaning that you can take as many long rests as you want here, and things are not going to change down here in the grove. Okay? And that's important for us. So we're going to head back down here. Oh, we can do one more thing, and we can talk to the rat. This is not time sensitive. Stay back, or else. Nothing's wrong. Just get back. Ow! Oh, my tooth! It's the front one. I chipped it on the evil thing. Maybe. I didn't think it would bite me back. Wait. You're big. You can get rid of the evil thing. Follow me. But be ready for anything. Hey, the rat's gonna head off this way. And if you follow it, you can see it heads into, into this room here. And I don't think this is time sensitive. But I had better do it just to be on the safe side. For this, you can make your way over here past the stone door to this side. Okay. Watch your back. This isn't really all that important that I do this without taking any damage because I am going to be taking. I do have another short rest left. Is that blood? No. A handy little trick. My Go. Okay. So I found that one. So we're going to back up a long way. And then here we have a wooden barrel. Underneath the wooden barrel is another torch stalk. I have some good arrows and some gold in here. We're gonna pick up that pouch. No one back home will ever believe this. Have I been this way before? Now here, this is actually a good question. Yeah, now I can get out of there. Limits. Leave. In a secluded place all alone. It would be too easy to do away with her. Far beneath your talents. Okay, we have a persuasion check here. We also have an insight check we can make. today i'm sorry nerves are shot after the attack do what you gotta do 
Sorry if I don't show you around. I just fall back down. Legs are as steady as a foal's. Bloody potion. Okay, so Dark Urge is going to have some interactions here. From the old lady in the cave, the one with the lotions and potions. To her credit, it worked. I'm as strong as a bugbear and fearless. Of course she also warned of side effects. Should have listened. Now I'm stuck guarding crates. All right. I guess being fearless won't help if an arrow comes flying right at me. Okay, now I don't have a spell to be able to heal her with, but I do have other options here. And actually, that's a good question. I don't think that... Let's move. ...works on her. I need... I, when the goblins will come. I need lesser restoration. But, of course, I don't have it on anybody here. I need to go get Shadowheart and bring her back. <clears throat> Another step forward. But that's a good question. With my party ungrouped, can I Not change somebody word. out? The Blade of Frontiers. Let's hope Will lives up to his name. We'll need all the help we can get. A bit crowded, don't you think? You'll need to swap out someone if you want me. Wonderful. I was beginning to feel a little left out. And with her... I don't have access to Lesser Restoration yet. But we will here. Definitely want to remove her again. All's well that ends not as bad as it could have. So, we're traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. I feel safer already. Perhaps if you lost a follower or two. I prefer to travel in smaller groups. It's more... intimate. Excellent. Now that that's settled, lead on. Okay. And now I can talk to the rat again. Ugh, the evil thing's in the chest! Okay. So, for the chest, 
Step quick. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get seen no matter what happens here. Okay, but the come. evil thing's in the chest, Nobody so I'm going to knows. steal from the pantry chest. Let's actually move and, well, so that we none of my party is in their detection code. I don't think that's gonna matter. At least things have stayed interesting. Hello, you. Yeah, see, she moved over here. Okay, so she's gonna be angry with us. Okay, she didn't. She didn't see me. Okay, and that key goes to the alchemist cabinet. Actually, if I go talk to the rat now, the evil thing gone. No, where was I? There's been a lot of speculation about what the evil thing is out of all the things that I picked up, but you can go about it systematically, pull, pull one item at a time out of the chest. It's the key that is the evil thing that he's talking about. Okay, and now I'm gonna wait until she turns. Not everyone yep. subscribes to what is mine is yours, it seems. Okay, so she is going to see you do it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, that book is marked steel. Everything else in here is going to be marked as steel. You can come back and loot this room later, though. So you don't have to worry about trying to steal everything. I could have held off on that stealing until later on as well. Okay, but now I have... I don't think, like I say, I don't think that's a time-sensitive um, interaction. But either way, I've finished it off. So let's get out of here and we will head over and start our interactions here with Auntie Ethel. Is that everything? I, think that's everything. I guess we can get our free food. You saw you fighting those slimy bastards. Fancy a bowl? Best to fill your belly now while we still can. Food. You want it or not? Look, it ain't much, but it might make all the difference. The only way we'll make it to Baldur's Gate is to run, and run hard. If a knoll catches your scent, you'll need every bit of strength. Trust me. So, now let's do our interactions with Auntie Ethel. Now, like I said, the amount to raise her of gold required to raise her attitude from 0 to 100 is based upon your level. Right now at level 3, which is where we are, that's 600 gold. That would take a huge chunk out of our available gold reserves here. So we're going to deal with the mechanic that revolves around attitude. And to do that, we're going to go back to camp. And we're gonna go talk to Withers. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Okay, now we can change my class for a hundred gold. 
Okay. So we're gonna do that. As thou desire. We're going to leave all of this the same for now, I believe. Yes, everything else is still the same. All of the same starting stats that we had picked. So at level one, we're going to stay a bard. Now we are not going to level up. And now at level one, Need anything? Any lotions or potions? At level one, hey, the amount of gold it takes to raise an NPC's attitude from zero to a hundred is only four hundred gold. That plus the one hundred gold that we spent to respec is a hundred gold cheaper than the 600 gold that we would have spent at level 3 to raise her up to 100. And it makes double sense here because at only 500 gold, two times that is a thousand gold, and we're going to be spending 1600-ish gold here with anti-ethyl, so this just makes even more sense. Okay. So now what you want to do is in the barter screen, donate exactly 400 gold. Okay, give her gold to start with. Don't sell items. What happens is as you, or don't give her items. As you give her items, her attitude will go up. But, and that discount will go up, which means that you're able to those items become worth more value. By the time you get to 100 attitude, the amount of gold you could be making by selling them has been um, outweighed by the amount of value you've given her when the items at the start were of less value because your discount wasn't high enough. So start always by giving them to the gold. She's now exactly 100 attitude. And now you can start selling off all of your items to get that gold back, all right? So a bunch of things that we need to get rid of here. And we're going to watch our offer value here. Okay, so that clears out our trash bag. Yeah, I guess I could maximize that by gaining more persuasion. We're really getting down into the weeds now. <laughs> but Take sure, now, I'll, uh, I'll show it. Once you've gotten your level up, once you've donated the gold to raise her up to up to full attitude, you no longer have to stay at level one. You can stay at level one to raise other people's gold levels, like Damon's, because we are going to be doing the same thing with Damon. I don't know as if I have enough gold to be able to do it. Thanks for fighting off those goblins. If you need to replace any gear, just ask. My selection's pretty slim. I had to leave most of my equipment in El Torel. Yeah, I'm a little bit short of being able to do it with him. 
Um, but Damon, you can level up now. Again, the combat bonuses that you're going to be able to get with the plus one items are certainly worthwhile. You're going to be buying the hunting short bow anyway. However, the amount of stuff that he's got here um, that you're going to be buying doesn't really add up to be a thousand gold uh, unless you're you know just spending a crap ton on on other stuff like stocking up on arrows and that sort of stuff um you're going to want to raise his level at some point though because at some point auntie ethel's going to disappear be as we progress through this and you're not going to have a location to sell items off so your Damon is a good place to do that just because you're going to be buying the hunting short bow from him anyway and you're having a place to sell and getting additional value out of all of that stuff is going to make up for that additional gold um, that you've given to him so we're at 341 now thinking here because like I say we are a little bit short I think what I'm gonna do is this because I don't want to have to spend another hundred gold to respec again that's a waste if I can gain an additional 60 gold by selling some items to to Auntie Ethel even though it's not at the highest price I could possibly get Bother. That's going to save me more than that hundred gold it's going to take in respecking. So let's go ahead and sell off some items here just to get me up to 400 gold. And we're going to try and get as close to it as we can. Do we have any... There we go. That's 400. Take care now, sweetie. So now I'm going to go back to Damon. I'm going to donate 400 gold to Damon while I'm here. I'll do that. Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. Go to the barter window. Okay, and that's exactly 400. That raises him to 100. And now, the reason for this, just to illustrate it. Looking for steel? I have, well, something close. Is because up here in the corner, you can see there's a persuasion stat. You can go look online at the wiki for how prices are determined, but your persuasion bonus factors into that. So if you want to truly maximize how much gold you can get for selling stuff and how much gold you're going to save in purchasing items, then getting your persuasion stat up high is going to help that. Now here we're going to, at level two, this doesn't really matter as much. Level three, however, we're going to do something a little different. So first, don't forget your skills here. Okay, so performance, we're going to take expertise in performance. That takes us from a plus five to a plus seven. We're also going to take that additional one, or I mean in persuasion. In performance, we don't necessarily need that extra. So I'm going to go with deception in its place. Well, I really want that. I'll respec again later. 
I'm going to have to respec later anyway, where I'm going to go into performance for a per very particular encounter that I'm going to have. And I need to add in these three here. So... Survival... Okay, so now all my skills have been chosen. I'm going to obviously go with College of Swords and Dueling. Now for my spells, though, I'm going to go with Calm Emotions. There's a very specific reason that I'm going to do that, rather than Enhance Ability, which is what I picked last time. And now I can go to Auntie Ethel. Hello, Petal. Need anything? Any lotions or potions? Hey, bother. So now with the persuasions up to seven, instead of a 50% discount, I'm at a 67% discount. So it gets me an extra 17% here bonus on top of this. So we are definitely going to be buying Coraline's Grace. We are definitely going to be buying all three of these. Now we can balance this out by cleaning out all of our trash here. And I'm just taking a last look through these. Okay, so we need to keep one of those. We don't need those thieves tools. Okay, so she's not going to be able to balance that. So we will take out some of the more high-priced items. 988. Torches are remarkably valuable. Okay, and I think that's it. I don't think I have anything on me that's worth two, and I'm not really interested in completely um, playing this over because we're going to be able to sell all this off next time when her gold resets. Okay, so we're going to barter that off. Take care now, sweetie. And now with her... I'm going to take a long rest. You can see I've got 428 camp supplies. I'm going to need 80 to do it. We'll have our set of conversations here. We're going to have a bit of conversations to go through on this long rest. Finally, some good fortune. Come morning, we know what to do. The sooner we find this priestess gut, the better. Can't wait to get rid of this thing in my head. Head to Baldur's Gate. Someone's waiting for me. 
Let a girl have some secrets. Was there anything else? Hey, we're not going to pry into her memories. The same. These parasites are proving suspiciously benign. But suppose I turn. What would you do? Wise. Though, I hope you'd miss me after I'm gone. I think I would if the positions were reversed. But you're right. If we're to make it through all this, there can be no room for hesitation. You're doing well. It's a beautiful night. I think I'll stay up to enjoy it while I still can. Rest well. Something the matter? Remember, every time you have a pre-generated conversation from a character, always click on them again to see if there's more things that they have to say. You know, I've been thinking, reflecting on what tomorrow might bring when we meet this goblin priestess. Will she know how to bring the worm under control? Will this little adventure of ours be over? Good. I don't want you to run off just yet. You're quite the ally, after all. Traversing Avernus, surviving the crash, surviving everything that's followed. I'm not easily impressed by people, but you're stronger than I gave you credit for. Yes, we're more similar than I thought. leagues away I just need to get some air clear my head I'll see you later I'm sure sleep tight well hello what can I do for you A fine evening, don't you think? The moonlight shines warmly on us. The breeze caresses our faces. Hideous. All of it. Would that I were doing battle up there, among the tears. Look above. Watch the moon cross the sky. The tears follow behind it. Rocky bodies tumbling through the sea of night. One of them is my crash. Clear. Your curiosity is to be commended. Githyankia hatched in crashes all throughout realm space. Clear is one of many. It's there I first saw a Kithrak mount a red dragon. Where I slit my cousin's throats at the Vash's command. But enough of this. You are wasting your resting time. Come dawn, we resume our search for a crash. The Githyanki people have a word for men like the Blade of Frontiers. Shalak, roughly translated, idealist do-gooder, or better yet, benevolent burden. His confidence is an asset, his pursuit of valor, not so much. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a Sathisk purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond. Observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant, order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge. Yet we still collect more. 
Infinities upon infinities. Be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. And this is what I mean, multiple conversations that are pre-scripted from her. Speak. You can check all of them until she doesn't have anything left to say. A tingle runs through your head and down to your feet. Ah, there it is. That shiver. Our little brain worms have made fast friends, it would seem. How do you feel? Surprising is just the word, isn't it? Before the Elithid's unscheduled surgery, I'd felled hundreds of beasts and a fair few fiends. The tadpoles weakened me, suppressed greater talents, but beyond that, I've showed no signs of turning. No nausea, no pain, not even a hot flash. Indeed. Perhaps the worm's vat was poisoned. Perhaps we're uncommonly fit. Or perhaps the tadpoles are merely on holiday. We could conjecture all night. I suppose the why doesn't matter so much as the what next. And that answer is plain as the horns on a war devil's head. We get these things out. Let's get some rest. Dawn comes sooner than we think. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it. And she was planning to return. One of the Archdevil Zariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach. Even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking. The damage she might be doing. A powerful friend with a keen interest in... Privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. All right. Anything more we should discuss? My father once said, one does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. Proud? No. Angry. Angry at the monsters preying on innocence. Angry at the so-called good gods for tolerating the cruelty of the evil. Angry at myself that it took so long for me to see the coast suffering. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. Baldur's Gate born and raised. The only son of a single father. He wanted one life for me. I chose another. We haven't spoken since I left the city. A classic drama, <laughs> a staunch father and his rebellious son. Better heard from the bard's lips than mine. A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone, carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah. But that story is reserved for lifetime friends and karma days. By all means. Seems unusual to me. 
Then again, we're talking about tadpoles inserted into our brains by rubber-skinned tentacle monsters. There's nothing usual about it. All the more reason to stick close. I think you'll agree. Anger. I understand. We've been preyed on by elithids, suffered insertion of a mind-bending worm. Bloodthirst is another matter. But perhaps not too big of one, if it's a devil or demon's flesh you're wanting to tear. Okay, so we'll check and see if there's well, anything more. And now Gale. I've known a few warlocks in my time. Talented, of course, though sometimes too eager to listen to the devils on their shoulders. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. Think of it as tribute. The kind a king might pay to a more powerful neighbor to avoid invasion. As long as I pay, there will be peace. But should I ever stop, along comes a war. I can assure you, the battlefield would extend well beyond the borders of my body alone. Hey, we're not going to deal with this until we have to. Okay. And now we are going to head to bed. For the long rest, we are not going to use any camp supplies. We're going to take a partial rest. So our hit points and spell slots are going to re re be restored up to half of the maximum, rounded down. So if you have an odd number of spell slots at a certain level, you're only going to get, you'll get less than half. This also restores half of your resources, so things like superiority die, key points, um, that sort of stuff also get refreshed. It does not refresh your short rests. Um, however, Song of Rest on the Bard does reset after a partial rest. And also things like Luck of the Far Realms do, will not reset after a partial rest either. However, a partial rest will reset vendor inventories because it does move time along in the world. So this is going to help us advance some of these cutscenes, like with Astarian and things like that as well. <sighs> so we may have some more conversations in the morning. So we'll just check and see real quick. Doesn't look like anyone specifically wants to talk to us. So now we can just leave camp. Shame the goblins didn't kill me. We are right back here in front of Auntie Ethel. Need anything? Any lotions or potions? Hey, bother. And now you can see her inventory and her gold are reset. So we're going to keep buying these and selling off our trash. Up until we don't have anything more to sell off. And I think, I think, yeah, they were supposed to, to fix that, but I don't think it happened. So we're going to balance that out and barter that off. Actually, we have one more here. I didn't balance that. So I gave her I gave her a trap disarm kit. Oh, I didn't want to give it to her. I wanted to keep that and move it over here anyway. So a little bit of a, a mistake there. There are two more things that we want to do. We have two shovels here. And Astarian has...
more than five thieves tools and we're actually going to move our trap disarm kits down as well Okay, so we have a pouch here. Astarian now has a pouch. To keep throwables and stuff in. Move that to Lazel. Move that to Gale. And just cleaning up the inventory a little bit. Gale already had one. So we'll move it to Shadowheart. Get rid of those camp supplies. And now sell those last couple of things to her, and then we'll take another partial rest. Any lotions or potions? Hey, bother. Okay, so we're up to 808 gold. We're not going to spend all of that gold. However, we are going to do this one at least one more time here, just to get Take us a care, decent no, stock of these. So you can see my short rest did not replenish. However, Gale's spell slots, he got back two first level spell slots. Doesn't look like there's any conversations. Whoop, shadow hurt. They're ready. Hmm. Something's wrong. I feel. I feel. Ah, ah it hurts. Darkness, protect me. I. It's difficult for me to talk about. I'm sorry. I'm going to have disadvantage on this check here. Still have a lot of bonuses, though, but it's an 18 DC. That's... I've actually never tried this before. Roll the one. Hey, I got the one out of the way. On a check I didn't really need. Please. It's nothing. Just let it rest. Okay. I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with. Quite a lot, if I'm being honest. But it always passes quickly, so I can manage. Positive. You can trust me on that. I don't know what you mean. It's nothing, really. Okay, so now I get a persuasion check that does not have disadvantage on it. Still high. I could add advantage to this, but I don't want to. If I fail it, I fail it. You're not going to let this go, are you? You might wish you had. I worship Shah, the mistress of the night. It is my holy mission to oppose Saluna, her teachings and her followers. <laughs> it hurts. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. Th 
Forever, ideally. And you assume too much about what I can and cannot tell. Secrecy is everything for Shah's children. It is our code, our creed, our shield. I even keep secrets from myself. I had my memories suppressed so that nothing I know could be used against the Dark Lady. Once I prove myself, my memories will be restored. I'm not sorry I kept this from you. Not one bit. Though, perhaps that might change, if you can show an open mind. All right. As I said, Shah is my patron, my mistress, goddess of darkness and loss. I assume you've heard of her? Curious. Most are afraid of my lady. I think I did well by joining you. Most agreeable company. The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Shah. I can feel her influence somehow. I'll try my best. But secrecy is ingrained in me. Lady Shah considers it greater protection than any shield or armor. I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. It's difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. It's less difficult than you might imagine, when you can't remember life without it. Pain is sacred to followers of Lady Shah. Pain will give way to loss and then to the peace of her eternal darkness. You can tolerate a great deal of suffering so long as it has meaning. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? She took me in when no one else would. Without her, I wouldn't be alive. She's my mother. She nurtures me, cares for me, loves me. Don't believe the lies the Salunites tell. What? Besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. No, I can't. Quite literally, I mean. With my memories suppressed, I can't betray Shah's secrets. And I can't remember much of myself, either. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. That is not for you to know. Leave it at that. Fine. What's on your mind? Okay, so that should finish off most of the conversations with Shadowheart. We finally learned about her Shar worship. 
Um, there aren't any other pressing conversations, so we'll again go to shot. bed. We're probably going to have an interruption at some point. So always look around in the morning, make sure if you have any other conversations waiting for you. Something the matter? Fine. What's on your mind? I must admit, you've been a surprise, and not an unpleasant one. Kindred spirits are few and far between for me. Besides... You saved my life aboard the Nautiloid. How can I do anything but sing your praises? Okay, so she had Nikon, but nothing really pressing there. And nobody else. This is ridiculous. And repeat. Hello, we'll do this one people. last time here. Need anything? Any lotions or potions? bother okay so now we've got a decent stock to continue on and I'm not going to worry about selling any more okay so let's head out of here We're going to pick up this torch. We'll pick up that backpack as well. Can't remember if I searched these barrels and that sort of stuff or not. I'll just take a quick look. And let's head down into the grove itself. Keep your distance, darling. <laughs> Easy. everything okay so we've had our interaction with mattis and just to check our journal again here so we need to find nettie we're going to find her in a little bit we know that the goblin priestess is in the goblin camp and the yankee crash we need to find the patrol which we're going to delay for a while <laughs> um we're going to find out more about the parasites as we go here and the urge is starting to reveal itself more and more. So we need to speak with Kaga, which is definitely what we're going to go do. And we did start the Save Goblin Saza quest, which is going to, like I say, going to lead us hopefully into an achievement. We're advancing the personal quests of our companions quite a bit through our partial rests, which is always a good thing to have happen. On my way. Please, last room. Let my daughter go right now. She's a thief, Hellspawn. And you will wait for Korga's judgment. Now get back. Oh, let me through, Mragrasham, or I'll rip your damn throat out. Okay, well, that'll end that fight pretty quick. We need to get Arabella out, now! You heard the guards. They're waiting on Corker to give word. I'd sooner trek through the Nine Hells than trust that snake! Ugh. 
Arabella tried to steal their idol. Druids lost their damn minds about it. They need it for their precious ritual. Oh, it's all my fault. I told her I wished the wretched thing would just disappear, or better yet, explode. Now Arabella's being judged by a bunch of druids who hate us. That's not right. She was caught. Foolish child. Let them judge her. Thank you. They won't give us the time of day. Hurry! I'm at the end of my tether as is. Can't take this waiting! Okay, so let's make our way down here. I have something to ask. Carl Magrin, give her a chance. You, get back! No, and you'll find trouble all the same unless you get out of my sight. A moment, Giona. What? Oh, I understand. You! Apparently, Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. Okay, before I go anywhere, I want to refresh. Speak with animals. If you insist. You there! Ah, my good friend! You were at the gates just now, no? When the goblins came? You saw them up close? A few questions, if you please. There's no overstating my interest. Glory. Now then, how would you describe that particular batch of goblins? Size, nature, distinguishing qualities? You search your mind, successfully recalling various details of goblin behavior. A scholar after my own heart. Spent much time among goblins. Uh -huh. I've always preferred experience to the second-hand accounts of lesser men. But to each their own. Now, I've a few more questions, if you don't mind. And the dragon they had marching in the rear, was it of the brass or silver variety? Dragon! How marvelous. Thank heaven you were here to specify, or I might have recorded a bold-faced lie. Last question, then you'll be quite free. Did the attackers rally to the Absolute when they fell upon the gates? They did, didn't they? Oh, oh curious. Oh, curious indeed. I've interrogated one. A captive in this very camp. She reports they've abandoned their god, Maglaviet, in favor of someone called the Absolute. The scandal! Oh, I'd imagine him quite displeased. Since their change in allegiance, these goblins are informed by a kind of strategy anathema to their kind. I, for one, intend to get to the bottom of it. I'm just preparing to head to their camp as we speak, in fact. If you'll excuse me, I ought not to dawdle. Never you mind. Who needs mercy when you've a quick tongue, hmm? Huh? And an invisibility potion stashed in your back pocket. Until we meet again. Follows a character. Just a moment. This man is recording my story. I am far from home. As the colorful man starts scribbling, the bear sneaks a quick look at the page. His brow furrows. Incomprehensible squiggles surround a crude sketch. A bear disemboweling a clutch of tieflings. Okay, and now we're going to head down here. This place is actually somewhat important if you are in honor mode. 
first thing is moving that out of the way. The Amulet of Sylvanas, I don't think, is marked as steel anymore. It used to be. But I'm not going to chance it. All is ash and meat. What is it? Looking ahead. I want to have a word. He didn't come back, did he? His smell is gone. He's gone. Master, he left with the weaponed two legs. He said he'd be back. But I can smell them, the weaponed ones, and I cannot smell him. He's not coming back. No, the woods have gone dark. There's too many predators lately, even for Master. Yeah, picking up the Amulet of Savannah was always buggy when it was stolen. But now you can see down here, we have a fish. It's not marked as steel. We can pick it up. And if you sit here and wait, you can see he will go fishing for you. And you can pick up that fish. And you can wait a little bit longer and he will go fishing for you again. And you can pick up that fish. There is a potentially unlimited source of camp supplies here and each one of the fish are worth four now it is a long time to wait for uh for camp supplies but it is a a source of camp supplies um so feel free to indulge yourself here um by picking up unlimited camp supplies <laughs> if you would like but in honor mode especially with it needing 80 camp supplies per long rest depending upon whether or not you're being frugal with your action economy or not um you may be in need of camp supplies and there that's a way to get them okay so we're going to head up here around the corner We're going to talk to Spar. No, it hurts. It hurts. Please make it stop. Can't you hear it? Her singing. It's awful. Terrible. Yes. Yes. That's it. Finally. A song to set our heads straight after that display. We should leave before the effect wears off. Away! Away! Okay, and now we can talk to Alfira. Dance upon the stars tonight. Smile when pain will fade away. Words of mine will change. No. Become... Ugh. Words of mine will turn to ash when you call the last light down. All the love I can't repay Rest and know that I will pray. Farewell, my dear old friend. Wait, that's it. i
Thank you. I was having trouble finding the words. It is a cool cutscene to watch, though. I'm glad Larian kind of added on to Alfira's experience here. She is a fairly important character as an NPC. It's been so long since I... since... sorry. Damn it! I don't usually. I'm all right. I haven't finished a song since Lihala died. I haven't played at all, if I'm honest. She was playing her lute. We didn't hear the gnolls coming. There was so much blood. Uh, I can still smell it. She'd yell at me for that meter and make me play it over and over again. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Finish the Weeping Dawn for her. I've a long way to go, but thank you. I, I needed this. Thanks. Lehala made me love music. Sound, the feel, the thrill. But when she died, it was gone. Until now, I'd forgotten what it was like. That itch in my fingers to perfect a song. The Weeping Dawn will be my gift to her. Thank you. I... I needed this. Too sweet. Odiously sweet. The vomitous gall within despairs at your kindness. Hey, a little foreshadowing there. There are some things up here that we can pick up. Yeah, that actually would have been kind of interesting to be able to recruit her as as a bard. So the two bowls here are worth quite a bit of gold. And around the corner here. That's crackers open. In the future does not look good for Alfira. It doesn't, huh? And here's the cap of curing. So when you inspire an ally using bardic inspiration, they also gain 1d6 hit points. Very useful early game for a bard to have. No reason not to put it on. Best be on my way. Okay, now we are going to skip this encounter here there is a chest we can go over there and get if we would like however we're going to do a couple more quick things out here and then we are going to go see kaga Okay. 
Camp supplies are way too valuable to be uh, throwing them around to, uh, to get him to come off the elevator when you just convince him to move. I'm not going to have an interaction with Topat. Well, I mean, I guess I can. I can show you what it is, but... Shh! I'm concentrating! Does this look good? Is the coin in the middle? Okay, so now you're able to pick up the gold and the shiny key, and they're not marked as steel. That deception check frees you from having to go into hiding and steal them. Speak. The bird knows. She needs to know. You do not. You, I fear. It is my brethren. More follow Korga every day. They are afraid, and she offers a simple solution. Eject the refugees, and we will be safe. Perhaps not. But that does not make it right. Only Master Hulsin can stop this. I pray my bird returns with news of him. If not, I fear for my people. The ritual is Korga's decision, but she is not our leader. Master Halsin welcomes the refugees in. I wait for him to resolve this. Okay, now I am going to split my group here. Return to me then. I'm going to take my bard back up the way we came. Cast Featherfall. Oh, come on. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to make it because of my strength score. a path here. And that's going to be too high. I'll just do this the old way. So I don't have to sit here and waste time with y'all. I've never learned to converse with your kind. Healing potions are cheap. Go. 
don't give up now. Because I don't think I'll be able to cast it again. And get Lazel. Oh, I can get her in it. And we're just going to pick up the shiny chest. And then we're going to jump both down while Featherfall is still active. Okay. And now here in Lazel's inventory, we have the shiny chest. We can drop it. And the key is what we just picked up from Topaz's nest. Okay, and I'm going to pick up the shiny chest because I can sell that. Go pick up these camp supplies. I am going to take that. Need to find a way forward. Be sure to take just the mugwort and not the sickle. And last, we'll take the dagger root over here. Oh, I didn't pick up the antidote. We'll take the book sitting over here. And now we're going to go talk to Kaga. And this is going to start a chain of events. So if you're not prepared for this, um, then organize your party or get yourselves oriented so that you're able to be prepared for it. Madness, Koga. She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. A death viper. You have not been a poison before. A single drop of it could kill that child in a heartbeat. Girl? You mean parasite? She eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Koga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. The snake's hiss of approval reveals its intentions. Should the child struggle, it is poised to strike. The death of a child. A timeless tragedy that never grows old. Okay, so because of the Dark Urge, you have an option here. Um, and Arabella will try and run, and she will get bitten, and she will die. So, like I say, a lot of interesting things here that the Dark Urge opens up. of the tree father spoken plain it is as you say sifisif tila to me <laughs> out thief my grace has its limits thank you Korga. master holson halson isn't here keep his name off your tongue lest tila pierce it okay so we're gonna do 
couple of quick things here. You can talk to the, or have an interaction with the rats. Glares at you, but says nothing. We'll talk to Kaga. Go on, say it. You think I'm a monster? First you urge grace, then you speak truth. You surprised me twice over. A shame the grace period ends. The viper's fangs have been bared. She must guard her brood. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. The Rite of Thorns. It is the Tree Father's gift that none come to harm. When we speak the final prayer, the Great Vine will sprout forth. The grove will be cloaked in bramble and thorn. No one enters, no one leaves. Sanctuary. None of this can happen while outlanders infect us. Sylvanus demands that we choke them out. A disease of the flower must not reach the root. Pluck the petals, sever the branch if you must, but cut out the rot before it infects the whole of the wood. Teachings of the Tree Father. Do you agree? Then you know I heed his wisdom. I protect the circle, whatever the cost. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to Sevlor. Offer to guide the Outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. You will do more than speak. This tale ends but one way. With the Outlander Rot cleansed, and the Grove forever shrouded. That woman has more venom in her heart than a snake in its fangs. But at least the child is safe. What is youth if not a time to be forgiven for one's transgressions? Couldn't agree more. The girl wasn't innocent, but that doesn't mean she was guilty. <laughs> Am I for her? Uh, we're not going to give any spoilers yet on how we're going to play this out. Um... You did well to speak up for the girl. That snake is fickle. A tragedy prevented. But there are several ways to play out the final, quote-unquote, interaction with Kaga. Well seen. Well spotted. We've let a snake replace our leader. Master Halsin. Perhaps Goblin Court. Perhaps dead. He'd set Mistress Korga back in line. Hold her to task. Stop this damn ritual. More will die if the rite is finished. So many more. Sent into a world gone mad. Would you? I would give anything to see Halsin return home. Sylvanus's blessing upon you, and my gratitude as well. Halsin is an elf with the presence of a bear. He left west with the adventurers. You won't mistake the first druid for anyone else. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things in here. Ridiculous. First, we're gonna. Is this wicker chest not marked child. as steel? One who tried to steal from us. Yet she failed. Hmm. That's what matters. Strange. Okay, so we're gonna head in here and head around the back. I'm gonna make a quick change in my inventory. 
trust no one. Let's move. Into the shadows. Okay, and I'm going to put a starion into hiding. Again, more coral and silver. Um, out here, the wolf can both patrol this area. So if you're going to do this, it's best if you either wait until they're gone, but still also do this in turn-based mode. And I think Silver might be coming around here. But they will eventually leave. So I'm just going to wait them out here real quick. Then I'm going to go into turn-based mode and I'm going to pick my way into this chest. Since I split my group, that's why I put the silver pendant here so that he'll have access to guidance when he does it. Okay, Markarl, let's go. Move it. You got other things to be doing here. Put the book away. Thank you. Simple. Man, I'm just going to take all of these items out of here. And exit out of turn-based mode. Stemming softly. Intestines throb. Blood whispers. Keep a blade. Okay, so on Astarian, we picked up a book here, and we picked up. Oh, I forgot about the inspiration. I def definitely needed that. And then a half-torn note here. Between Oladan and Kaga meet, wanting to meet at the tree. I have such a headache. Moving ahead. We are definitely going to go do that. Fairly quickly. We're just this not going to do it today over. because it's going to take some time. That combat is fairly the straightforward. The um, but it gets drawn out. Um, because of the way that we're going to do it. What's up for discussion? I see you. Just give me a moment. This may be catching. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? You found her, but I still don't know what she can do for you. Come here. Let's have a look at you. You seem healthy enough. A bit tired around the eyes, maybe. A tadpole. A mind flare tadpole. I... Uh, I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. We need to be quick. Okay, this everything way. out here is going to be marked as steel. So don't worry about any of it yet. Head on in. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. Seems so. Gave Master Halson a right start.
It's why he joined the adventurers on their expedition. To find out what was happening. A pity you got me instead of him. He understands these things. Studied them. Still, we have options. All right. Let's see what we can do. It might. But first things first. Tell me about your symptoms. Have you noticed anything strange happening? Victims can identify each other. Not that the others know they're victims, of course. How'd you pick up the parasite? Halson was desperate to find where all this was happening. A mind flare ship? But Master Halson was sure. Look, you've been straight with me, so I'll be straight with you. You're dangerous. If you transform here, we're all dead. But you seem like a good soul. You deserve a chance to save yourself. This is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me, you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. The thorn? Coated in a fatal toxin. It was a last resort, in case I couldn't trust you. I don't have a cure. Only a way out. I'm sorry for misleading you, but I had to be sure you weren't a threat before I told you everything. Now, do I have your word or not? Swear it. I hope it doesn't come to that, but thank you. Here. You know, I've spent my life treating folk and never once saw a mind flare infection. Then suddenly, there's dozens of you. Maybe more. Master Halson and I were tracking them, studying them, trying to figure out what the hells was going on. Because you should all be changing. There should be a small army of mind flayers out there. But you're not. Weird powers aside, you seem perfectly normal. Mind flayers reproduce by infecting someone with their parasite. Seven gruesome days later, the victim transforms and a new mind flayer is born. The thing in your skull, though? It's different to anything in our records. It's one of their worms, for sure. But this one gives you powers. Telepathic connections. And it doesn't turn you into one of them. Not yet, anyhow. Could be. But there's a lot we don't know. Infected. Folks like you have been converging on an old temple of Saluna, and I've no idea why. When Master Halson heard the adventurers were heading that way, he saw a chance to get answers, joined on the spot. Whatever he found there, he didn't make it back. The thing is, I've sent birds to find him, but the place is rotten with goblins. None of us can even get close. You, though, you're one of them. Technically speaking, I mean. They won't kill someone carrying their parasite. If you can find Halson and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned. And perhaps he can save your life. How's that sound? Thank you. It would mean everything to the Grove. To me. I wish I could tell you more. But only those adventurers know what happened out there. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna. And Master Halson didn't make it back. Good luck out there. And if things start to go bad, remember the vial. Remember your oath. Hey, a couple of things happened there. First, you kind of heard the sound effect of her closing this door. Um, during the conversation and then in the background you actually saw her open it back up that conversation can actually result in a fight with Nettie and you will end up being locked in this library and that is where there's so 
something in that vessel. Take a closer look. This perception check to open up the stone slab comes into play. This will lead you back into the underground passageway that we went through with Saza and allow you to get back to the grove. Um, Nettie can either be in here, and if she dies, the rest of the grove does not turn hostile if the fight happens in here out of view, um, or she can lock you in here, and this can be your way out. The other thing that can happen is that she could intentionally poison you, and if that happens, a lot of people have asked the question about what is this cauldron of boiling theriac about and that sort of stuff. And I'll just explain it real quick. There's a book here that's marked as a quest item that talks about a bottle of antidote. Extracts needed salts and a suspension of bullywood trumpet. Okay. So the that's going to unlock a recipe for us, but it also allows you to because you don't have bullywug trumpet that's out here, if you get poisoned, it starts another quest. And that quest is a short quest in a way to um, cure you of that poison. And it involves this cauldron here. And it allows you to interact with the cauldron with the mugwort that's in here and create an antidote using this cauldron out here. It's a fairly rare interaction because most people don't end up getting poisoned uh, by Nettie. But this, the, the cauldron out here and that book allows you to advance the quest to cure yourself of the poison before it kills you. Because it is a fairly virulent poison. Um, and, and that is a way to cure it even if you don't have an antidote on you. So there was a perception check that we passed, and that's for the Mind Flayer Parasite Specimen here. That's the only thing that we're going to steal for now. Wretched thing. Pull yourself together. Hey, and we have Speak with the Dead, and we can cast it on the Drow here. Corpse regards you lifelessly. Ned Siranis of the Absolute. Scouting found druids. remains silent. It doesn't understand the question. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Okay, so that is going to end our interactions here to to start with. We are not go we are not done in here. But for now, we're going to head back up because I mentioned when we came in here that this started a timer. And you're probably curious as to what that means. It started a timer specifically for me as a Dark Urge character. I mentioned in the description of this uh, live stream that somebody has to die during this episode. And... A hint was thrown out that the future does not look very bright for Alfira. And there's a reason for that. 
once you talk to Kaga, you have now started a timer where on your next long rest, someone will visit you in your camp and ask for sanctuary. And letting them stay will generate a certain interaction. And that person that wants to come to your camp is Alphira. Now, we already know from previous live streams how important Alphira is with the items and the one buff for a bard that she can give you in the game. So the Dark Urge needs to take special care with how they uh, prosecute this portion of the playthrough. And what I'm going to do is make sure I'm outside of any detection cones. I'm going to put everybody in hiding, and I'm going to go into turn-based mode. Now, what I mentioned earlier was that you need to make sure that your party is set up for this. Okay? And what I mean by that is you need to have a melee-damaged melee damage focused party if you come up here with a bunch of spell casters you're probably not going to be able to do this in a way that is uh tidy i guess um you're going to end up making this quite messy and what we want to do here is we want to knock alfira unconscious and a couple of different ways to do that. First, if you one-shot her, then you can escape any possible consequences for this. It's pretty hard with her hit points at 26 and being at level 3 to one-shot her with anybody in your party. So you're going to kind of see how this plays out now. And the first person to attack Alfira is going to generate a an interaction or an intervention okay so i am going to turn on non-lethal attacks non-lethal attacks only apply to melee attacks they do not apply to spells and ranged attacks this is what i said about spell casters you can't cast guiding bolt against her and knock her out it only applies to melee attacks okay now the other thing to know is that when you turn on non-lethal attacks it turns it on for everybody not just the character you clicked it on so i'm going to sneak attack alfira here your aggression has won you no friends any further violence could be met with the same Okay, now what will happen is if you are not in turn-based mode is Alfira will heal herself. You see her start to do it. Okay? And she will very quickly outpace your damage that you're able to do here. So you need to be in turn-based mode to do this and non-lethal attacks. Okay, and it says knocked out temporary on her okay so now that she is knocked out i'm going to exit turn base mode and we're going to get another reaction here or another interaction here careful i bind okay normally we get another interaction here that's very interesting. Okay, so we got away with it. Shocking. That has happened to me one time. <laughs> Normally, what happens is the first person who attacks Alfira, Aaron will come down from his store He'll run all the way down here. He will approach you and he will ask you to or say that you've been caught doing something and he will send you to prison. And that's why we cleared out the stalks 
and that sort of stuff on that path to make it easier for Astarian to escape from prison and come back and meet up with the group. Uh, here, we just got away with it. So I'm going to immediately take advantage of this and take a long rest. Okay, now this interaction starts, what the trigger for it is speaking to Kaga. So before you speak to Kaga, you can take all the long rests you want and nothing's going to happen with the Dark Urge. But as soon as you speak to Kaga, your very next long rest, you're going to have going. an interaction here. And Alfira will want to come to your camp. My, you startled me. I, uh, it's miles away. No special reason, really. I was just practicing an incantation. Oof, trying to fail it, chat. can I say? She's... She's Mistra. I can't quite describe it. The need I sometimes feel to see her. To draw the filaments of fantasy into existence. No sculpture or painting could ever do her justice. Only the fabric that she herself is that embodies. The weave. Mistra is all magic. And as far as I'm concerned, she is all creation. Magic is my life. I've been in touch with the weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Is it the same for you? Fair enough. Though in the end, we're still playing the same composition. Perhaps I can show you what I mean by reaching into the weave together. Then follow my lead. Now you. Okay, so I have various ways to to go through this as a bard and a spellcaster. A familiar feeling, like a kind word and a kind touch at the same time. It's warm and comfortable. Excellent. Now, repeat after me. Athra Mistra Ril Kantrak Eo. Ah, oh, yes. The scent of rose water and a sense of well-being. A sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue. Very good. Now, I want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony, as true as you can. You see, or is it sense, the unmistakable presence of Mistra? the Lady of Mysteries. There's something like the anticipation of a kiss, then the pleasure of being cloaked in peace. You are safe. 
You are nestled in the cup of Mistra's hand. <laughs> you did it! You're channeling the weave. How does it feel? You're hard to please, aren't you? The weave connects you. The moment feels intimate. The weave evaporates, and as it does so, you realize the night feels suddenly cold and lonesome. Oh, there it goes. How easily things slip away from us, no matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. Okay, so we'll quickly just check with everybody else in camp, and then we're going to go to sleep. Quick word. Well met. Salem, it's a good question. Um, we're going to be exploring that more as we go. Um, probably a little early what can I do for you? from a spoiler perspective for me to go in it go into exactly how I'm going to play it but I think you're going to catch some glimpses of how we're we're going to be playing our dark urge I kind of hinted matter. a little bit um, about it um, at the beginning of this live stream um, but yeah we are going to have a choice um, of how we want to play our Dark Urge character. We could have played it a few different ways up to this point in some of the interactions that we've had. Um, and we're kind of so far choosing a particular way, but yeah, we're going to get more into that as we as we progress through the stream, Salem. But it's a very good question. Um, for everybody who doesn't know, like I say, I'm just trying to avoid a few spoilers about how we kind of play out the rest of the live stream. So now I'm going to immediately go to bed here. And I'm going to take an actual long rest here. Okay. Um strange. Okay, that did not play out like it should have. So, I'm going to do that again. I'm a little worried. Now. About this. Because that did not play out at all like it should have. And I don't know if that Gale cutscene somehow messed it up. Actions have not gone unnoticed. I forgot to go into turn based mode. Assist, it seems they will not go unpunished. I'm a little worried, chat. You 
your aggression has won you no friends. Any further violence could be met with the same. Time for bitter business the light would fear to shine on. Because this is acting very, very weird. Aggression oh. has won you no friends. Wow. Any further violence could be met with the same. Surprised you spotted me. Someone there. Okay. Now she's knocked out. Let's end my turn, or exit out of turn-based mode. See if I get caught. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. These boots have seen everything. This is very, very weird. I've played this out half a dozen times, and it has never done this, but I've never also not gotten caught. This is not playing out normal. Now, nothing about this is playing out how it should. And I have no idea why. So I am going to end the light. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, this is not right at all. Not right at all. It's like he bugged out or something. It's like he bugged out somehow and never got the interaction here of catching me okay how far away from him I'm 17 meters away from him Gale's going to be the problem here. With ease. Can he get far enough away? Nothing about that interaction 
was normal. Um, nothing about it. I, like I say, I have played that interaction half a dozen times and it has never gone that way. But every time Aaron has actually come up there and arrested one of my characters, I think somehow he just bugged out on, on my honor mode playthrough of all things. Um, and and caused it to go wonky. So I don't know how this is going to play out, chat. I don't. I I have zero idea um, how this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the live stream here. There is no testing. I can do with this. <laughs> um, we're just going to have to see how it plays out next week. Because honestly, I don't know what happens to... Well, I think I know what's supposed to happen with Aaron right now. But I don't know if it actually does happen. I don't know if he's just completely bugged. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Um, what I'm going to do, though, right now my plan, is that I'm going to leave camp... To go outside, I'm going to journey back into the grove and do it with one character, Astarian, and see if Aaron is still angry at me. Um, if he is not, then what I'm going to do is kind of set my characters up in a slightly different orientation and try and knock her out again and try and take a long rest again and try and get Aaron to arrest me. Maybe it was because I was using Astarian to attack from stealth. So for some reason he saw that as Astarian's in hiding and he can't find him or something. I have no idea. Um, but we will try something next week. Like I said, I won't be able to test it <laughs> because it's honor mode. Um, so... Whatever happens, happens here, but I'm, I'm trying not to anger the entire grove here in doing it. So, why can the things not just go like planned? I did this in my off-stream honor mode playthrough, and it worked perfectly. <laughs> why? <laughs> I told you, y'all get to see me stress. At least things are so, as always, um, thanks for everybody for being here. Um, I certainly appreciate it, uh, all of the support that I get from all of you in the chat. Um, but this is a, a good place for us to call the end of the live stream. We're a little bit late here, but it's a little nerve-wracking at this point. So thank you all for being here. Um, again, without your support, none of this would be possible. This is Commander Jorval saying, until next time, which should be fairly interesting. Fare thee well. <laughs>